WMAL. Now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 736 here on O'Connor and Company, where if you listen to us all four hours, uh, you can not make it through the day and hear any news item and respond to somebody. I have no idea. No, you won't. You'll know everything. You will not have to say, I have no idea, like Bill Nelson. Uh, coming up at 835, John Androsic, Five for Fighting. Talk about his concert he just gave in Israel. It's Larry O'Connor with Julie Gunlock. And Julie, it's the other Julie in my life joining us now. That's right. Another blonde bombshell, too. <laughs> Julie Kelly, who publishes on her Substack Declassified with Julie Kelly. It's always essential, but even more so over the last week or so, Julie. Great work you've been doing yeah. on uh, the multiple miscarriages of justice at the hands of Jack Smith, the special prosecutor, the, the uh, Javert to Donald Trump. Julie, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Larry. You're just surrounded by women. You just oh, tell me <laughs> about it. It's, this is my cross to bear. Um, listen, there's two major stories I want to get to uh, based on your great reporting, uh, solitary work that no one else is yeah. doing that Julie Kelly does. That's why you need to be a part of her Substack. I am. Uh, the first, we broke this down earlier. The uh, the information that Jack Smith demanded be redacted, classified for ostensibly national security purposes, they've now been unredacted thanks to Judge Cannon. And what Jack Smith was trying to keep from the American people was the fact that the Biden White House was colluding with the archives and the FBI prior to the Mar-a-Lago raid. It's, it's right there in black and white in this document. That's correct. And first, it's taking that a step further, what Jack Smith and the DOJ and the government wanted to conceal is that Jack Smith has misled both Donald Trump and his co-defendants, but more importantly, in a way, the American people about the origins of this investigation into so-called classified documents. We were all told that Donald Trump resisted calls and pressure from the National Archivist to turn over what they believed were government records, right? That turned out to be the Sharpie Gate map of Hurricane Dorian, Hmm. the letter that Barack Obama left for Donald Trump before uh, he took office, and little minor things like that. So Donald Trump complied, turned over 15 boxes filled with um, various items, and turned it over to the archives in January of 2022. Then the story goes, oh, gee, the archivist found all these classified papers that risk national security. Oh, my gosh, what do we do? We better call the DOJ and FBI and look into this. And that is allegedly how the investigation began. No. The archivists, national archives, were already working with the Biden White House, including later that year, one of their Joe Biden's top attorneys and the Department of Justice to it, concoct and manufacture some sort of records or documents case against Donald Trump. Right. And one of the, the, the attorney that you referred to worked in the White House counsel's office, which is which is intimately connected to the Oval Office. And it, it defies credulity that the White House counsel's office would be involved in this situation without the president knowing about it, which, of course, the president has denied up until this point. Julie, it also appears, and by the way, it should be clear, this document that we're talking about that Jack Smith wanted classified from the American people, uh, this is from the Trump defense uh, argument, right? This is there. So, you know, they're they're maintaining this in a court document, which means that they swear that it is all true. This is all things uh, that ostensibly will come out during the trial. Am I right about that? That's correct. So this okay. relates to what was called a motion to compel that was filed by the defense in okay. January. And that's where it laid out the defense team, Trump and his Donald Trump's lawyers, what they called the scope of the prosecution team that involved all of these agencies because they participated in manufacturing and then accelerating okay. the, this investigation into Donald Trump. But in this motion to compel, they they quote from emails. So I, I doubt that they would just make it up and put it in there. They've seen evidence that supports this. And it almost sounds like in the beginning phases of the communications between the archive and the White House that the archivist or the person representing uh, the archive, NARA, is saying, yeah, well, this is all pretty routine. There's nothing strange here. I mean, you know, That's the, the, the sense that I get which sounds more like it was the White House that compelled him 
to make this into a Justice Department issue rather than this originating from the archives. That's absolutely true. That is what it sounded like. It seemed like there was some tension at NARA between their their general counsel saying, no, this takes a very long time. This goes back to, this is in May of 2021. So Donald Trump isn't even out of office for, you know, six months before they are figuring out a way to harass him and his team to get these documents they claim are government property. So you have one NARA official basically saying, oh, no, this is a very hectic time. It takes a lot of time. But then you have the archivist, David Ferrero, who probably is like so many of these unknown, unaccountable, but egotistical, power-hungry bureaucrats that love to figure out a way to work with Democrats to take down Donald Trump. And he is the one that was pressuring Donald Trump's team. And in June of 2021, wrote an email saying, I'm running out of patience, Uh, David Ferrer. Who are you? Right. Okay. Right. Run out of patience. We don't care. (laughs) But Donald Trump's team was trying to work with them, negotiate, figure out what they wanted. They were so nonspecific in terms of what they were looking for. But then... By the fall of 2021, this is a full year before the raid in Mar-a-Lago. This is months before the boxes were produced and NARA allegedly found these classified papers. They were already working with DOJ and Jonathan Sue at the General Counsel's Office of the White House to figure out how to uh, draft a criminal referral against Donald Trump and send it to officially the Department of Justice. This is another, I've called it now an entrapment scheme. This is another mm. way that the gov- these powerful agencies working with a Democrat White House concocting an alleged crime um, to, to trap Donald Trump and turn him into a criminal defendant, which they did very successfully because, of course, now the, uh, the case is ongoing in southern Florida. Oh, uh, Julie, you know, you talk about Judge Cannon and this and how because of her, we essentially know what's happening. Um, But you say that the Department of Justice wants to get rid of her. First of all, how would that happen? And secondly, are they going to succeed? Well, Jules, Aileen Cannon is our kind of woman. We would love to hang out with her. (laughs) uh, (laughs) She is uh, no, no nonsense, tough as nails. There's definitely bad blood uh, between her and the Department of Justice and Jack Smith's team. Keep in mind, she is the one who, in September of 2022, took the extraordinary step of appointing a third party, a special master, it's called, to vet all the evidence collected at Mar-a-Lago because she does not trust the DOJ, Mm. (laughs) and justifiably so. Now, the DOJ has not yet filed a motion to recuse. They have not asked her to step down. But, of course, we know all the legal experts, the ones that Politico just revealed yesterday, are on weekly calls trying to get on the same page as they spread out to MSNBC and CNN and ABC News to talk about these cases. They are the ones trying to get her to step down. And now we see why. Because her, she takes this job very seriously. She's doing her job as a judge, unlike some of the other judges that we're seeing, um, to protect the rights of Donald Trump and his two good co-defendants and make sure that the government is not overreaching in its authority, which of course we see. They are. Yeah. Julie Kelly, real fast. I was speaking with Julie Kelly, declassified as her sub stack and you should subscribe to it right away. Uh, Quickly, you have a story about how it's not Donald Trump who's delaying things in the January 6th case. I mean, he's at the Supreme Court tomorrow, but that's called due process. That's not a delay tactic. But you're saying it's actually Smith and uh, Judge Chuckin here in D.C. that's delaying things. Can you uh, break that out quickly for us? I can. So that is on my sub stack. Um, You know, the Department of Justice started investigating Donald Trump for J6 as soon as uh, Merrick Garland took office. They had an expansive investigation going on. Uh, They ended up with a dead end at the end of 2021. They were looking at financial crimes. That went nowhere. Uh, Then they continued the investigation, had to appoint Jack Smith. Then November of 2022, when Donald Trump announced for re-election, Jack Smith took another nine months before he brought a J6 Uh. indictment. August of 2023, Judge Chutkin then took extra time to Mm. hand down her order to nine presidential immunity. So that outlines people want to blame Trump for exercising his due process, but the people who slow walked right. us into 2024 and now are stymied by the Supreme Court, 
those are the people responsible. Thank you. That's that the whole narrative is that, you know, Trump's yeah. just using delay tactics to get to the election day and will never resign. And then he'll pardon himself or whatever. They didn't know anything new when they brought these charges late last year than they didn't know on January 7th. <laughs> they could have back in 21. Right. Hundred percent. The only reason why there's any so-called delay is because this has to do with him running for president, not about justice. Julie Kelly, great stuff as always, my friend. I wish we had more time. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Seven.